Since I'm an elementary ed major, I decided to do my final project for this class on rural Alaskan education. Um, this is a system that's been evolving since the beginning of the school systems here in Alaska, and I thought it was would be something interesting to research. The beginning of uh, the school system started in Alaska by the Russian Orthodox churches. They created the very first schools here, partially because they were one of the very first people here that were not uh, just the natives. They wanted to institute the educational systems because they saw the native people as savages and they wanted to civilize them. Now, this meant that the schools would be separate. There would be separate schools for white kids and a limited number of civilized native students were allowed to be in those white schools. And the other schools that were operated by the Federal Bureau of Education were just for the native kids. They were had very different philosophies. They put their value on civilizing the natives and teaching a code of behavior rather than academic knowledge. Their overall goal was to create a child that dressed, ate, walked, spoke, and thought in a civilized way. They had a dress code in these schools usually and it was only English being taught in so that these students would be more westernized and not so linked to their culture. In order to really hit this, when a new student came into class, they would be taken to the bathhouse where they'd be cleaned, their hair would be cut, and they would be inspected and taught about good hygiene so that they could continue this. This school system that was purely based on civilizing these students was not successful academically because that was not their goal. So as more standardized tests came back, it forced a change in philosophy. Uh, they saw that these students were being put significantly behind academically and that their standardized test scores were way behind even other minority students around the country. This is when the push for an equal schooling experience began. It was no longer acceptable for these students to receive a poor education just because they wanted them to be civilized. However, it was not enough to just want these students to succeed. The changes had begun, but there was a lot of challenges that these students faced that all other minorities also faced, but they were more extreme in the rural Alaskan system. First of all, there were a lot of first-generation college students. It was hard for some of these students who maybe came from low socioeconomic areas where their parents didn't go to school, or they simply came from a rural area where education was not the most valued. You were valued in society if you could fish or hunt well, or if you were very good in the house, if you were a woman. And so school is not necessarily seen as something that was necessary to be successful in your community. Another, uh, another example of a challenge they faced was financial constraints. There were students that really thought that college would be important and that higher learning was very valuable, but they simply could not afford to go to school. College oftentimes was very far away from their home and the subsistence lifestyle that their families lived didn't leave them with a lot of extra cash because they were simply living off the land. Another problem was educating these parents. Parents in the villages did not know how the college system worked in some areas. They didn't know about the standardized tests these students have to face or how prepared they would, be, they would need to be going into college. When the parents don't understand this, it's hard for them to really push their kids to get into college. It was hard for these educators to have to not only educate the students, but to educate the parents as well. The school system that, the, that their kids went into was often very, time, very different from the school experience that the parents had ex had, had, and so some of these parents didn't even attend school at all. So part of the teacher's role is to make a conscious effort to incorporate these parents into the classroom and to teach them how the school system works. You want to make these parents feel valued and feel like they are really a part of the classroom as well with the students. 
One of the biggest issues that these kids faced once they did actually get into college and find the money to go was their lack of preparedness. Oftentimes these students wouldn't finish college or would not have the test scores to get in. Now, it's not because of a lack of the teacher quality because these teachers that teach in these rural areas oftentimes are very, very good teachers. However, there's just not a lot of teachers because there's not a lot of students. So this leaves those few teachers having to master every subject and every skill within that subject, which is a very difficult task to ask of these teachers. There's a high turnover rate in village schools, which makes it even harder because if you do get a teacher who has finally mastered a wide variety of skills and they leave, you're starting all over again with a new teacher trying to master a whole new set of skills. One of the greatest predictors of academic success is a student's belief in themselves. It was proven that the concept that students have in themselves is a significant predictor in terms of how far they will go in college, their GPA, and the withdrawal rate. Students who have a higher rating of academic ability had a higher drive to achieve and more self-confidence. This led to them to be more successful in college. The more you think of yourself as successful, the more willing you are to work and work through struggles. The hard part is, oftentimes Native students are used to a cooperative way of learning because that's what they've grown up around in the village. However, college is not always like this. A lot of times you sit in a lecture room while a professor talks to you and then you have to go home and complete your assignments on your own. While there are places to get help, it's not always appealing to these students because they do not want to feel like they are stupid for going to get help. So the college environment can be very difficult for these students because they are just not used to that kind of learning. To help foster self-belief in the students, kids need to begin feeling successful early in their schooling career. One way to do this is to have culturally responsive classrooms and standards. A culturally responsive classroom is one that, that really takes into account where the students are coming from, the culture they're coming from, and incorporates that into their classroom learning. An example of this would be to use the native ways of thinking first before trying to use Western terminology. For example, if you're trying to teach about velocity and force in a river, for example, use the example of fishing, which a lot of native students will be familiar with because it's something that's very common in their community. If you teach them first about the concepts they already know with fishing and then apply those Western terms to those ideas they've already learned about, they'll have a much easier time grasping this kind of knowledge. This is a successful tool that many teachers are able to utilize in their classroom and it has been proven to be very successful. It is very easy to incorporate things like this and it's also very important because oftentimes these native students can feel like they are being left behind if their culture is not being valued. Another way that you can bring culture into the classroom is storybook intervention. This is the idea of helping students with their assignments by, by telling a story first and then having them respond with a task. Oftentimes, these students in their community are told a story and then they must finish a task like building a canoe. In school, it's very different because after they are told something orally, they often have to respond orally again or in writing. This can be a hard concept for these students to grasp because it's not something they are familiar with. Being a teacher who's not native, it might not be something that I would think about, but it's important to keep in mind in the future. The final way teachers have been successful in incorporating the native culture into the classroom is by using some of the native languages that they are in. Oftentimes these students can feel lost if they are very fluent in native language and just starting to learn English. Also, the langu native languages in Alaska are slowly dying off because they're just not being used. Schools can be an important, important piece in keeping these languages alive, 
by bringing them into the classroom and using both the native language and English. This can help those students who speak the native language fluently to feel valued and appreciated, also to feel very smart because they can teach their peers about the language. There's been a big push to get Alaska Native elders on the community that helps create the curriculum so that we are making sure that the curriculum and the assessments are thoughtful of the Native cultures. However, this integration does not come without any problems. All of these rural schools are still part of the larger federal education system that requires new standards and new assessments frequently. So not only do they need to hit the cultural requirements, but they also need to hit the federal requirements of the academic standards. These rural schools have teacher shortages and a decreasing number of actual native teachers, which can make this a lot harder. Now, all of these ideas are things that every teacher can look to incorporate into their classroom. There are going to be challenges that every student will face in their academic career. However, if the teacher is there to push them and educate them in the best way possible, there is nowhere to go but up. When students truly believe that they can be successful, their rate of success is much higher. The goal now of these Alaskan rural schools is no longer to keep the culture out, but to incorporate it into the classrooms in a productive way. There are a lot of challenges that these students face, but there are a lot of challenges that every, every, every type of student faces in their education. However, the teachers can be there to help with this. By creating culturally inclusive classrooms, their rate of success in higher level education may improve. Another important role is the parents. It is part of the teacher's role as well to educate the parents, as well as motivate their parents to help motivate their children in getting to higher level education. When strong relationships are built between the parents, the teachers, the administration, and the students, success rates are high. Students and families feel valued after these bonds are made, and they are more apt to become involved in the education process. With the parents involved behind these students, uh, these students may place a higher value on completing school and going on to college. Teachers can take these ideas of making education relevant to the students, taking into consideration the cultures that these students come from and the challenges they may, they may face because of these backgrounds, and integrating that culture into the classroom. Also, all teachers can take into account the importance of connecting with parents and making parents a driving force behind a student's education. While this might be uncomfortable at first for many teachers, it is more valuable for the students and that really is what is important. The goal of everyone involved is to see these students become successful in the future. This is why it's so crucial for schools and families to collab collaborate and find ways to incorporate the culture into their classroom. It takes an entire community to produce successful students. Learning about the education system in rural Alaska has been something completely new for me. However, as a future teacher, I hope to incorporate a lot of these ideas into my classroom in order to make it better for all students. I don't know where I might end up teaching, but if I do end up teaching in a rural area, especially in Alaska, I know that I'll have a much better handle on how to, how to do things in the best way possible because of the information I've taken from this class. The study of education is important in looking at the future, so education is a large part of the anthropology study because it helps predict what our society will look like and act like in the future.